Oh, hey, hi, hello, hello, hi, hello, hello, how are you? Uh, my name is Cassie, uh, I, I am trans, uh, je suis trans, uh, estoy trans, uh, ich bin trans, sorry. Um, this, is, this is wonderful, this is wonderful. I, I, I recently uh, started transitioning from male to female, uh, so at, at the moment I'm making like, like 90 cents on the dollar. It's, it's, it's going all right. Um, you know, sometimes people say to me, they say, oh, do, do you miss being a man? Do you miss being a man? Fuck no. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I, I miss pockets. <laughs> I miss pockets a lot. Uh, so scientists think they might be able to transplant a uterus now. They think that's a, a possibility for transgender women in the future. That's exciting, isn't it? Isn't it exciting? It's, it's, it still can't sew a pocket into some fucking jeans, though. So <laughs> I don't know how much hope I hold out for that. Uh, when you are trans, people will ask you inappropriate questions, you know? They'll, they'll, they'll say things like, oh, they'll, they'll ask you about your, your junk a lot. Uh, don't. Uh, and, and look, and it, and it doesn't matter anyway, you know, genitals are like Mexican food, you know? We, we all have the same thing, it's, it's just folded differently. Uh, yeah, see, all right, that's, that's funny to me, but that joke doesn't sit entirely well with me because I love Mexican food. It's a rich and diverse cuisine, uh, but there is an understanding that it is somewhat homogenous, which I've played on there for comic effect. <laughs> really, I'm no better than Hitler. Um, <laughs> so this is good. Isn't this good? I, um, I have a, a relative who likes to mock and misgender me. I uh, think it, it's funny to do that, you know, and his reasoning for doing that is, well, I, I knew you before when you were presenting as a boy, and you can't just change who you are. You can't just change who you are. And after all, they're just words. What kind of weakling is hurt by words? And I thought about that, you know, and I thought, well, maybe he's right, because pronouns are just words after all. And if I am any kind of strong or brave person, shouldn't matter what you get called. So, so I decided to put this theory into practice uh, <laughs> by introducing him to my friends as a recently released sex offender. <laughs> You'd, you'd be surprised. It turns out words actually do matter quite a bit. <laughs> Fucking snowflake. <laughs> it's difficult. It's difficult to know. I, I, uh, I think I realised something was up at about 13 uh, when, I, when I became incredibly sad uh, that I didn't menstruate. You know? And I was like, oh, oh God, I'm, I, I'm pregnant. Uh, yeah, I was, wasn't a smart kid. Uh, uh, the hormones that they give you to transition are exactly the same as the hormones that your gender would have during puberty. Uh, so some trans people get the incredible privilege of going through puberty twice. Uh, you think that would make you better at it. Not so. Uh, it's very difficult to go through puberty at 37 uh, because I have the interests of an adult but the emotions of a 14-year-old girl. Um, so, like, I have this overwhelming desire to rebel against authority, uh, but also, I really like camembert. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, like, I develop these obsessive crushes on cute boys in rock bands, but also, I can get a boat loan. <laughs> together so you know it's all right I am um, I was uh, I was here I was here last year and I became very very sedentary when I was here last year and I, I became unfit I thought oh it's what I'll do is is I'll take up running I'll take up running has anybody ever taken up running to get fit you ever done that yes and when there's like when you do that was there like a procession of idiots just coming and telling you about the runners high it's going oh are oh, you gonna get that runners high Enjoy that runner's high. Yeah, it's gonna be great. How good could the runner's high be? 
How good? I, I've been actually high. I didn't have to get off my couch. It <laughs> seems like a better deal. You know? how, how good could the runner's high be? You never see people walking around like, yeah, cocaine's nice, but have you ever been late for a bus? <laughs> doesn't happen. How good could the runner's high be? Nobody ever got back from a marathon and recorded Sergeant Peppers. Just saying. <laughs> so this is nice. This is good. It's good to be here. This is delightful. Uh, this is far better than what I have been doing. I've been, I've been doing some gigs on the cruise ships. Yeah? You ever been on the cruise ships? You have? That surprises me a little because you're not a hundred and fucking eight. <laughs> They're very old. They're very old on the cruise ships. Jesus Christ, they're old, you know. And it's, it's hard to make fun of them, right? Because we're taught to respect and, and revere the elderly, you know? But, but, but we forget that the dumb fucks get old too. And, and we, we, we don't know what to do with them, yeah? So we, we put them all in one place and we push them out to sea. <laughs> they keep coming back! <laughs> and, they, and they hated me. They hated me, right? Because not only are they very old, but they're also very rich. Uh, so they've never had to solve a problem by thinking about it before. So they don't get jokes. Um, <laughs> There's, there's only one type of joke that they get. It's a type of joke uh, called a pull back and reveal. That's what we call it in the industry, a pull back and reveal. And what that is, uh, that's where you give your audience one piece of information, and then the final piece of information you give them recontextualizes the first, making it surprising and funny. And it's invariably something lowest common denominator. It's always stuff like, oh, oh I caught the bus here. I caught the bus here. It's always weird when you catch the bus, isn't it? You know, because there's always that one guy on the bus, you know, this guy, he, he stinks and he's ranting about the CIA and he's masturbating into some crisps, you know, you know, it's, it doesn't help when he's the bus driver. Am I right? Am I? So, <laughs> and, um, and I don't do that. I don't do that. And they hated me. I'm, I'm not sure why they hated me exactly. I think possibly uh, it was because when they saw me, I represented the new era and they realized that the world that they'd grown up in was now gone forever, uh, and they were literally set adrift. Uh, <laughs> you know, in, the, in the last shrinking bubble of their own disappearing ideology. Um, <sighs> or, or possibly uh, it was because I was very drunk and had forgotten to wear pants. <laughs> And that's how you do a pullback and reveal. That's... I, uh, I've been on adventures, I've been doing stuff, I got a new tattoo. This is, uh, this is my new tattoo right there. That is, uh, for, for those of you at the back, that is the emergency exits on a 747. That's what that is. I, uh, I got that because uh, I got that because I'm, I'm, I'm scared of flying. Is anybody scared of flying? No, you've all made your peace with God. All right, fuck it. I am. I'm, I'm terrified of flying, but I'm also very bored by flying, which is a weird mix of things. You know, flying is scary because you wouldn't expect a, a metal tube to safely hurtle through the air, um, but it's also boring because it does <laughs> for hours. And, and at some point on every flight, I can feel myself slowly shift from, Jesus, I hope this plane doesn't crash, to, I, I just want this to end and I don't care how. <laughs> Land, crash, I don't give a shit. I've done all the things I want to do with my life, most of which is trying different kinds of biscuit. Uh, thank you so much for having me. You've been a delight. Good night, everybody.